So I did my undergrad in North Carolina. I wanted to come back to Canada just because of how um, quickly the pharmacy profession is evolving here compared to other parts of the world. And I just wanted to be in a space where I could feel like I'm having the most impact I could as a pharmacy student. So I chose Toronto specifically um, because of how cutting edge Leslie Dunn Faculty of Pharmacy is um, in the programs and the classes, the way that all of that is devised, but also being in the center of downtown next to all the big hospitals and in a super cultural hot spot <laughs> where you get to meet people with so many different perspectives and just get to learn the best. That's why I picked this school. My path is uh, like most pharmacy students. I completed a Bachelor of Science um, prior to coming into the Doctor of Pharmacy program. And um, I know students as well who have just completed two years of undergrad or completed their master's. So it, it really is a, a plethora of different paths to pharmacy. And what's great is it just adds to the interesting and diverse group of people that you'll meet here with your family <laughs> with a PH. At first, I did an uh, undergraduate degree at McGill University where I studied pharmacology. I also did a research project there with one of my professors. And with pharmacology being the study of drugs, I decided to move into a more patient-centered area where I could use that knowledge of drugs and apply it to patient-centered care. When I was in high school, I was interested in science and healthcare, and I was also applying for a part-time job at the same time and I applied for a part-time job at a shopper's drug mart in my hometown. They had an opening as a pharmacy assistant and I thought this was cool because I was interested in healthcare and this was kind of my first foot into the door to get my feet wet into this. And so I took the position and I ended up really loving it. And it was just amazing to see the way that the pharmacist was the most accessible healthcare professional really and that they were so knowledgeable with everything. They can really help patients and make a direct impact on their outcomes. And so I went off to the University of Waterloo to do a Bachelor's of Science in Biomedical Sciences. And then at the end of that, I knew that I wanted to apply to pharmacy school based on my experience in community pharmacy. So I applied here to the Leslie Dan Faculty of Pharmacy and the rest is history. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so the course load is vigorous because it's a professional program, but it is completely manageable. So the course load um, varies semester to semester, so you can have anywhere from five to seven courses per semester. However, it is manageable if you're keeping on top of things. Our midterms, I find, are definitely more spaced out than they were when I was an undergrad. You're going to spend a sleepless night studying, but it is so worth it. Once you're out there doing your experiential rotations, uh, you really get to put it all into practice. It's like, wow, I learned this in school and now I get to talk about it with such like finesse. Like I'm not even having to think about it kind of thing. Um, and at some point, like you think about how your professional identity as a pharmacist is also starting to merge into your everyday identities. and. That's something that like hits you when you're doing your uh, rotations. The Leslie Dunn Faculty of Pharmacy doesn't have a co-op program. Instead, what we have is experiential rotations. So the difference between the two is that co-op programs are usually paid, whereas experiential, experiential rotations uh, are not paid. Despite that difference, uh, I, I find that I've had a great time at U of T because there's just so many options available. You have things like community pharmacy, hospital, industry, and so many non-traditional settings. One example is that I got to do a rotation at Shoppers Drug Mart head office, and I was actually analyzing incident data from Pharmapod, which I would have never thought that that was an option for one of the rotations. Another opportunity I got that was non-traditional was to do management um, duties in a community pharmacy. So I basically got to implement methadone program, I got to train staff, I got to do tons of things that I didn't think that really goes into being a pharmacy manager. Yes, so placements are guaranteed in this program. So we have a one month placement that follows first and second year. And then our fourth year is all rotations in different fields. So there's community, hospital, industry, non-direct patient care, um, and so many different ways that you can just explore different 
places in pharmacy. I think a lot of the time when we think about pharmacy, we think about Shoppers Drug Mart or Rexall and that community pharmacist. But there's actually so many different options for pharmacists to work in when they go into their career. And I think that it's great here at the faculty that we have guaranteed placements and that you can kind of explore different options and see what really gravitates towards you. Going to school in downtown Toronto is really perfect. It's super convenient as an out-of-province student. Uh, school is a short 10-minute walk from my apartment and that includes everything that's around the school. So there's a bunch of restaurants and study spaces as well as open spaces where you could just kind of take your mind off of school and recharge your batteries before you get back into studying. If you're not from Toronto, I highly recommend <laughs> you live in Toronto. Like, maybe even downtown, depending on the cost. Um, but living downtown has been great. I don't need a car. Uh, I barely need to ride transit because I can bike around pretty much anywhere. So if you don't have your own bike, even that's fine. You can get a yearly bike pass that's literally just a hundred bucks. It is so cheap. Um, and there's just so many different neighborhoods with a distinct like feel in each neighborhood. It feels like you're in a completely different part of town. If you are looking for, let's say, like a queer setting, there's not just one spot like the village, there's multiple different areas. Like you can go to the West End, you can go to some parts of Kensington Market, which have a lot of great um, music scenes, um, tons of art scenes too. So if you're looking for something not, to not just focus on school with, Toronto, downtown Toronto is the place to be. During my time here, I've had a part-time job um, at Shoppers Drug Mart and also at Sick Kids. And I also have been involved in extracurriculars in different capacities throughout my years. And I found it that it's manageable. Um, you just kind of have to keep on top of things, you know, create your weekly schedules, you know, know when upcoming assignments are. But for sure, there's different ways to get involved. And I think actually getting involved um, helps even make the coursework seem almost lighter. Um, only because when I was working at Shoppers Drug Mart, there were so many times that I would then have to then counsel patients on topics that we were learning in class. And that really helped reinforce my learning so that when it came to like doing assignments and having exams and stuff like that, I was able to then apply that knowledge that I learned in real life and in school and put it all together. It is definitely manageable to balance extracurriculars, work on top of your academic responsibilities. Um, for myself, I currently work at Shoppers Drug Mart as well. I'm UPS president and I think that all enriches my pharmacy experience here. So don't be afraid to explore your interests um, because that's what we really nurture at this faculty. UPS stands for the Undergraduate Pharmacy Society, and we're a student governing body that um, promotes social, athletic, and professional activities for pharmacy students of all years. Um, and really what our goal is to do is to enrich your experience at this faculty. Um, feel free to look at our website, which is uftpharmacy.com for a full list of sports teams and uh, clubs. And if you don't find one that you are interested in, you are so welcome to create your own club or, or a team at this faculty and we really encourage all interests um, to be able to thrive here. So there is a lot of medications and a lot of different disease states. Frankly speaking, in school, they do a great job of dividing up our disease topics into different courses. So first year we do things like general medicine, second year we have dermatology, we have endocrine systems, uh, infectious diseases, cardiovascular diseases, and then third year we have things like psychiatry and uh, oncology and then in the final semester of our third year we get to do electives so um, either in a specific practice setting like ambulatory critical care or institutional and also in a specific population so you could pick something like geriatrics uh, women's health or pediatrics the great thing about these is that uh, the classes evolve with every year when the faculty teaches the courses um, to stay up to date with current medications and current uh, disease topics. And because of that, it's impossible to learn every single medication, every single disease 
in school, but I will say that in the framework that we are taught how to assess drug therapy problems and um, deliver uh, pharmaceutical care to patients is very standardized in a way that if I were faced with a medication that I didn't know or a disease state that I didn't know, I would know how to look up information, know where to look it up, critically appraise that and really give the best possible answer despite not having learned that necessarily in school. So I think that's the biggest takeaway from this program is that they really teach you a process to be able to know your medications even if you haven't seen them before. <laughs>